and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! Fritz on a Hammersmith train exclaim, oh my, as she looks in on them. She picks up a route master but puts it back down because it's far too big for her monster hands to get around. Oh no, they say she's got to go, 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 Miss Gorgo. Yeah. Oh no, there goes Lesser Ho, go go Miss Gorgo, yeah. Mr. Alan Lanier is most surely rolling in his grave at the moment. Oh nonsense, Livingston, I'm rather quite sure that the founder of Blue Oyster Court would be most honoured and amused to know that his world famous monster song was ever so lightly revised to appeal to a more British palate for a British dinosaur monster that attacks London. Welcome to Creature Features, I'm your host Vincent. With me is my typically disinclined rock and roll musical connoisseur butler, the otherwise distinguished and conscientious Mr. Livingston. And over to this side is the lovely and quaint little darling, the well-mannered Miss Tangella. Except for last Tuesday. Did you know that on that day I found her out in the fields attempting to put trousers on all the goats? That was likely the day she sampled her homemade grape juice. Indeed. I believe she left that out to ferment a wee bit too long. The townspeople are still reeling from her angry campaign through the tourist district. Indeed. In any case, welcome to the show. As alluded to prior, tonight we shall present the British version of a Godzilla film known as Gorgo from 1961. This fabulous film frightened me as a child long before I'd ever seen the likes of the Japanese movie. Starring Bill Travers, William Sylvester, and a young Vincent Winter, we're most confident that you will enjoy this film that the Queen herself likely enjoyed as well. That is an interesting point. While the film is called Gorgo, the primary monster in this film is actually baby Gorgo's mother. So we should probably refer to this film as Gorgo's mother, but let's not complicate things before the movie starts, love. And who might be our guest this evening, Livingston? It was supposed to be those people from Grim Life Collective, but they had to bow out. Why? I'm sure they had something better to do. Presumably. In any case, don't go away, for it is to be another night of giant British monster fright, right here on Creature Features! <laughs> Stay tuned. Put that god-awful thing there. You did. Oh. Looks rather nice there, then. 
covers up part of your face. So I don't have to look at it. Did you know, Livingston, that tonight, 9 p.m., people could be watching All in the Family on yeah. Channel 5. I don't know what that is. Uh, so it's a show. Oh. Right? And uh, the, the, the story tonight is an irate and confounded Archie faces a day in court after first getting mugged and then being the one to get arrested. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, you could watch that, or you could watch Starsky and Hutch on Channel 7. But, you know, I'd rather go for the, the All in the Family thing, I think. Right? No? Maybe? He's no fun, you know. He used to be, he used to be a humorous bloke. He used to be like a, a bon vivant. I still am. I don't think so. Well, not around here. Anyways, uh, welcome back. Uh, if you didn't catch our introduction, we're showing Gorgo tonight. And Gorgo is... Gorgo without the N. Gorgon without the N. There was a Gorgon film, That's wasn't right, there? and I'm wondering if this is a British thing. Well, you know, oh, we like the word Gorgo, so let's put an N or let's drop the N, and then that's a monster. I don't know. It sounds like Gargantuan, but I don't know. Anyways, going to be a fun film. We're going to start that in a moment, but uh, we have no guests. They flaked out on us. But they're our friends, so they can flake out, correct? Friends can flake? Friends can flake out. Huh. No, it's permissible, unless it's something like a wedding or a funeral. Because you can't make up for it, right? You can't help it. No, you can maybe help it. Tanchala, what are you doing with this, this irritating thing? Pigs don't fly. She's got this thing with this, this, this pig. Uh, you know, typically she has something more hor horrid, and we, we should support this behavior, right? We should. But she keeps throwing around, hitting people in the head. It's anyway, so do you have anything interesting to add before we start this film? Anything to add? Right. No. How are you doing? Let it begin. I'm well, thank you. Well, you don't look well. You've got a big angel head in front of you. There you go. Now you look well. Although you could use a little bit of a trim. So can I. Anyways, let's start the film and we will see you on the other side of the next break. Don't go away. <laughs> No, Livingston, my hair is rather jubilant tonight. Jubilant? Yes. It's very unlike yours. His is hiding inside of his skull. You know, he does have hair, and I've seen it out before, but uh, he, he shaves it as soon as it pops its heads out. It's a Buddhist thing. You know, I think for one episode, you should do the haired Livingston. It'd be a sight. Behaired? A behaired Livingston. I like that. Anyways, uh, welcome back. We are watching Gorgo, and you know what's the most unusual thing about this film? It's got a bloody volcano off the coast of Ireland. Interesting. No, it's not interesting. It's false. There's not been an active volcano on the side of Ireland since, since I don't know, probably medieval times, if not before. Long, long ago. Long, long ago in an ocean far away. So, you know, I think, and Tom made a, a note about this, is that they're just simply copying, you know, a Japanese film, Pacific Rim, the, the whole volcano mm. thing and all this. But, you know, they're trying to implement it in Ireland. And there's, there's no volcanoes in Ireland. At least I don't think so. You know, watch, a geologist is going to write and say, Dear Mr. Van Dahl, you are wrong. Or no, I know somebody who knows things about climate and all these things is going to write in the comments on the YouTube channel. You know it. Probably. That's true. Even if I'm right and they're wrong, they're still right. You are wrong. I am right. It happens all the time. I don't understand the internet. It brings out the worst in people. Except her. Oh, dear. She's nice on the internet, but in real life, she's terrible. It's true, right? Indeed. Yeah, 
this this thing with the the wine in the the goats that was silly that was fun. she looks rather dainty right now though doesn't she i like your new parasol have i seen this one no you have to test it out in the sun love the lights in here don't do it justice she looks well, very had, victorian today didn't she have a sparkly one before she did all right is that the one she used to do that mary poppins bit off the roof she tried right <coughs> now she jumps off the roof now, i'm surprised she's not dead she should be dead by now maybe she's dead the hay bales know. saved her she's she's the she's the undead all right well i've blabbered on long enough let's get back to gorgo and when we come back we should do some mail should we not soon no next segment we we'll need to do mail it's the law everybody knows it's coming up back to gorgo see you soon This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. It is time for the mail, Mr. Livingston. Indeed. Mail, Mr. Livingston, please. Tracy, play. California. Tracy, California? Tracy. I've never been. Have you? No, not that I'm aware of. All right. Somebody in Tracy went to all the trouble to nicely print us out a note. This is from John Vincent Henry. You suppose this is three blokes writing to me? Three first names. John Vincent Henry. It could be three people and they just forgot the commas, right? Perhaps. Let's find out. So, dear Creature Features, uh, I'm writing to you to let you know how much I love your show. Vincent, you are a fantastic as a host. Well, thank you. Livingston adds a lot of class. Tangella is very cute and extremely funny. I used to watch Bob Wilkins on the original Creature Features when I was a kid. I was a lonely kid, and as I seldom got to see my dad. And my mom worked the graveyard shift. I wonder if she actually worked in a graveyard. Doesn't sound like it. All right. So I usually only saw her for an hour each day. I would wait all week long for Creature Features on Friday. It was some of my best memories. I recently lost both of my parents, and I was looking for something that would bring a smile to my face when I ran across your show. I think you guys are doing a fantastic job carrying on the legacy of Creature Features. I love the mansion. I think you have excellent guests. Your movies remind me of the old days. Some great, some so-so. But the rest of the show is so good that it makes up for the so-so movies. Once again, Creature Features has come to my rescue, and I want you to know that if you ever wonder if you are making a difference, you are. Thank you all so much for your hard work, and I want to wish you, your guests, and all the Poulton Mansion residents the best and many more years on the show to come. Sincerely, John Vincent Henry. P.S. Dad named me Vincent after Vincent Price. That's nice. I guess he knew all those years ago I would love the horror genre. Well, I didn't get named after Vincent Price. Who so, did you get named after? I don't know. Probably Vincent Van Gogh. Who knows? That would make sense. Listen to him. Well, thank you for the very nice letter, John Vincent Henry. I, we, we are most pleased that we are doing some good somewhere. You know, most of the people just say, hey, what a stupid show, right? That's the people. No, we go to a convention and go, oh, you're the ones that do that stupid show. Oh, you're not. They say that to you. Yeah. They don't say that to you. What do they say to you? Sir, good right. day. Thanks again for the nice letter. Next up, Mr. Livingston. We have a package. 
Yeah, you know, they only, they only say that to you because they're afraid you're going to beat them up. When they don't have to worry about him, she's the one they have to worry about. Oh, what is all this stuff? All right, I'm going to retrieve the letter and pass this to the young one because she likes to look at the packages. All right, this is from Eric Kalin in Green Valley, Arizona. I wonder if it's really a, a Green Valley. It's I don't know. I've never been to Green Valley, Arizona. Bloody area. Have you ever been to Arizona? It's a desert. Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Vincent and Livingston, Miss Tangella, this unique novelty is sent to the lovely Mademoiselle Tangella with hopes that she will enjoy it and share the results of her work with her friends. I suspect that Mr. Livingston will not approve. Tangella reminds me of the classic Return of the Living Dead. Yours truly, Eric Kalin, Green Valley, Arizona. So what you sent you? This is dog poo. A dog poo simulation. It's called Pudo. Oh, that's hideously wonderful. So this is Play-Doh in a variety of brown colors. All right. Well, now, I, somebody is making money off this, so it must be a viable product. Pudo. Is it not? Strange. All right. Next up, Mr. Livingston. We have some art. Oh, you, miss, you must move faster. They want to get back to the movie. They don't want to listen to our tripe. All right. Creature features, P.O. Buck. Oh, what nice writing. Look at this. They write like a comic book. It's legible. Right. All right. What do we got? We've got... Oh, my goodness. This is a photo of me. All right. So I'll put that up in a moment. Uh, dearest Vincent Tangelo, Mr. Livingston... My name is Chantel from San Francisco. I'm one of your biggest fans. I met you all at East Bay Comic Con in February of 2023. Thank you for indulging me with all the pictures I took. I took more pictures of you than all the cast from the Warriors. Love you all and keep up the amazing work. Love always, Chantel Siga. And uh, she goes, uh, she's in San Francisco, California. And she goes, P.S. Vincent, you smell amazing. I do smell amazing, don't I? Anyways, she posts yes, this you picture. do. Here's Chantel, and that would be me. And yeah, I always make that stupid face, don't I? She's got a nice face. I've got a stupid face. But uh, thank you so much for the very nice photo and the very nice letter. Last letter? From Toronto, Canada. Save the best for last. Toronto is one of my favorite places. Have you ever been? Yes. It's nice. Just don't go in the winter. It's too cold. Too cold. I mean, it's still a nice place in the winter, but if you go in the summer, then, you know, you'll have more mosquitoes in the summer. It's a better time to go. I don't recall that. All right, this is from Spencer Puddleton. Uh, that's quite a British name. Quite. He's obviously in British Columbia, right? I made a pun there. You're supposed to laugh. All right, dear Creature Features, your show has brought me many hours of entertainment. However, there's something that has always left me perplexed. It seems to me that your esteemed host, and I say this with the utmost respect, bears a striking resemblance to an irate black turnip. Do I look like a turnip? Don't answer that. Uh, I mean, it's uncanny. The stern expression, the rugged features. It's as if Mother Nature decided to give root vegetables a shot at hosting a TV show. Please understand that I mean no offense, but I couldn't help but share this curious observation. On a related note, I wanted to make a humble request. I've noticed a distinct lack of movies featuring shellfish, specifically mollusks and oysters and periwinkles, on your program. It would be an absolute delight to see these marvelous creatures take center stage in their own aquatic adventures. Perhaps a heartwarming tale of friendship blossoming between a periwinkle and a clever seagull teaching us a valuable lesson about unity and acceptance. I think this bloke's mad. Sounds rather perturbed. I, I hope you'll consider my suggestion and find us some films that showcase the underappreciated world of mollusks. It would add a unique touch to your already wonderful lineup of creature features. Sincerely, Spencer. Uh, you know, this is probably the strangest letter I've ever received, Spencer, and I, I do appreciate your enthusiasm and your your penmanship and uh, but I think you need some help my friend seek it out quickly is that, for, is that it for letters that would be it that is it for letters if you'd like to send us a letter of your own or a package full of 
and unmentionable, go, go to hellocreaturefeatures.com and that is a website that's got stuff that tells you information about how to write to us by email, by letter, by carrier pigeon, or if you'd like to send us a large sum of money from a secret Swiss bank account, that would be the place to find out how. Anyways, let's get back to Gorgo and we'll be back soon on the other side of the break. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are watching Gorgo from 1961. Did you blokes know that uh, this was considered for an Academy Award for special effects? Remarkable. Hmm. No, well, uh, the special effects for 1961 are not so terrible. I mean, hmm. they're all right. right? But uh, it, it was only considered. It was not nominated. There's a big difference. Right? What in God's name are you doing here? And, and where are your boots? I've never seen you in sailor shoes before. These Shall are my put those up. Hold them up so that people can see. These are my house shoes. Indoor house shoes. Somebody doesn't want me wearing boots in the house anymore. Oh, he, he drags in the garden, half the garden with him. You know, he tried. He tried that on me, and then I said, "All right, fine. Show me which shoes I should wear." He went to my closet, and he did not find one pair of shoes. They're all boots. So yeah. That's it. You know, the, your problem is you own regular shoes. Had you not owned regular shoes, you could have just come in with your boots. Mm -hmm. well, well, we don't have any rugs around here and there's stuff to clean up the mess. Why are you so picky about shoes? There are more important things to do than pick up things that are dragged in with your shoes. Like dead things? Let's take Perhaps. Jenna. She's the one you've got to worry about. He, he might bring in a bit of goat manure, but uh, Tangella, she brings in cadavers and the goat yes and that's enough to worry about they smell worse anyways what do you blokes think of this film so far I think curious I'm curious i think it'd be fun to see him like in spectacles with a pipe it'd be more british who him no the monster oh the monster in do you, what do you know how large those spectacles would need to be i know but it'd be funny no yeah, well i suppose if he Stole some round windows off a large church. He could make like some John Lennon glasses. There you go. And a pipe. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. silly. You're not even watching the film, are you? Yes. He's seen this film before. Anyways, uh, let's uh, let's get back to this film. And uh, when we come back, I, I want to hear an interesting story from you about something that happened recently. <laughs> come on, you could do it. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey, my name is Edward. I'm from New York City. Vincent Livingston Tangella, love your show. Request, Food of the Gods, please. You guys got to show it. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Miss Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you.
It's Gorgo Nights, and we are watching Gorgo here on Creature Features. A little bit of interesting trivia, if you'd like to hear it. Go ahead. When they filmed in London to have the empty streets, they would film very early in the morning on a Sunday because everyone was sleeping. And it was like, oh, we're not going to go out on the street now because uh, it's too early on a Sunday. Hmm. I suppose they do this with many films, would they not? Well, I think like, they would announce it and say, please, at this time, do not be on the streets. Well, then they could do it at any time now, could they? Well, not during rush hour. No. I suppose. No, how did they do? There must be a Sunday rush hour somewhere in London. Who knows? Anyways, uh, you're going to tell me the story. This, this, this thing about uh, your project you had going on today, what, what was that all about? I don't know if you call it a f fun project, but... I mean, it kind of ties in with why I had to get new shoes, but um, yeah, I spent most of the day traveling up and down the hill retrieving cow manure from uh, John Provost's lawn and his backyard. We have enough cow manure here. We, why do you need to retrieve some from John Provost? That's because Tangella thought she'd relocate it with her... Oh, uh, trebuchet. Yes. Oh my God. I thought we disassembled that. She found the plans. Got a screwdriver. So that's why he rang me the other day and was screaming in the phone. Yeah, I he cannot. Not I had amused. to say, John, call me back when you feel better. He was not amused. No. All right. Well, you know, he does not have any cattle. So, you know, he did not have the benefit that comes with all that manure, right? You know, the free milk and all this. So I can understand why he was a bit cross with us. Just the smell. Tangella. So you soiled your boots in manure. How much manure? Thousand pounds, something like that. Oh my goodness. A I don't trips. know how such a small, tiny person manages to load that trebuchet, let alone pull down the lever and the weights and, and launch a thousand pounds towards John Provost's house. John Provost, if you don't know, he's our neighbor. He used to be Timmy on Lassie. He was. Right? And here he is. He retired close to us. And instead of whiling his days away fishing, he's wiping manure off the top of his roof. That's wrong. We, we need to have a chat with her, do we not? When he calms down. No, not him. Her. Her. Uh. She's, she's always calm. Anyways, let's get back to this film. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll probably have Tangella here and have a, a little sit down with her, right? <sighs> See you soon. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Angela, I told you to pick up your own toys. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching Gorgo from 1961. Uh, you've missed most of the film, so you might want to switch over to Starsky and Hutch, right? But they missed most of that as well. So uh, anyways, uh, we're watching Gorgo. And Livingston, do you know Gene Simmons? I know her very well. Her? It's not a her. She's an actress. No, Gene Simmons, the rock, the bass player for Kiss. Ah, no, I don't know. So, uh, presumably, he took the design of Gorgo's head and made his boots look like Gorgo's head. 
I don't know if it's true. This is what Tom told me. But, it, uh, you know, it sounds like something Gene Simmons would do. I yeah. have no idea. He spits blood. Why? Because it's part of his performance. You have odd friends. No, well, he's not a friend. Well, you know, I think he's a friend, but I don't think he knows me. So it doesn't mm. quite make him a friend. But anyways, uh, Tenchella, uh, word has it that uh, you covered John Provost's home with manure. Yeah, Andrew just said that he had to haul 1,000 pounds of manure that you launched with your trebuchet that we agreed upon you would not use anymore. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with these two. Which one do you think is telling the truth, Livingston? I think that Andrew is telling the truth. Well, you know, one thing, though, that I find curious is he obviously had manure in him, and she does not. So I mean, how could she launch a 1,000 pounds of manure and not bring any in the house? And look at her boots. Show, show your boots. Look, she has no manure on her boots. She has overalls and wellies. I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know. Anyways, maybe there's, some, some, there's a gray area here. Yeah. If you kept an eye on these two, we would know. If I kept an eye on these two, I couldn't do anything else. That's true. Anyways, what do you say we wrap up this film? Please. All right. Uh, let's get to the end of Gorgo. Don't go away after the credits roll. We'll be here. Tangelo will be here. And uh, we'll be curious as to where you went. So uh, let's uh, finish up Gorgo, and we will see you on the other side of the credits. Bye. <laughs> And so ends Gorgo. You know, he, what in God's name is this? I believe it's called a spider. Well, I know it's a spider, but what's it doing here? When, when did she sneak that in? Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I don't know what I'm going to do. With, I can't even see you. I could barely see you. So, yeah, I, I don't know how I put up with these people. You know, I, I've got to go through this at least once a week. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyways, uh, Gorgo saved the day or saved her baby. Kind of made a mess of London, but uh, yeah, London's kind of a mess, anyways, is it not, Mr. Livingston? Where I, are you? I'm here. Uh, all I can see is a spider's behind. Abdomen. I'm talking to a spider's behind. Abdomen. Abdomen? No, well, this is his backside. So, uh, fun movie. We'll show it again in uh, two years and seven months, right? Tangela, two years seven months. Yeah, she would, she would make like a nice little chronometer person who could keep track of our schedule, but uh, no, she's got better things to do. Anyways, uh, what do we got going on next week? Something fun? Mr. Livingston, are you there? I'm here. Well, we got something going on next week. We have something every week. All right. He's not going to tell me. Because he, he knows if, if he told me the film, I would tell you how it ends, which is... It's not a bad thing. You've probably seen all these films anyways. I mean, most of these people probably knew how Gorgon ended, did they not? He, he refuses to speak through spider legs. No, I don't blame Are him. Are you talking to me? Oh, hush. Anyways, uh, that is it for us tonight. Uh, we'll be back next week, maybe next Friday as well. So uh, make sure you tune back in to wherever you watch us, whether that's YouTube or Creature Features TV, or maybe they watch us on, on one of those uh, cable channels that we're on as well. Who knows? But we would love to see you back. And uh, don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Tangela, with you know all your experience with all this manure, Perhaps you could become a celebrity spokesmodel for some kind of manure distribution company.
I guess not.